Good afternoon. Once again, it's me, Ed Mofrad, CVA, member of NACVA, and a privileged member of Around Evaluation World, AVW. And uh, this afternoon, I have the privilege of interviewing Mr. Shannon Ship of Ship Needham Economic Services, LLC, all the way from Fort Worth, Texas. He has honored us for being here. He just had a wonderful session. Um, I uh, caught the tail end of it, but I was mesmerized. I asked him to uh, join us for this interview. Uh, the topic of his interview was lost household services. What that entails is, let's say if, uh, there's a wrongful death situation, unfortunately, and uh, on top of the emotional aspects of losing a loved one, uh, the household has lost the economic services that that, that lost person has been was producing and now they have to do without it. So they come to this expert to uh, analyze the and quantify the economic side of the damages. So why did you choose this topic for this particular uh, conference? Uh, I've been doing uh, calculations of uh, lost economic support in wrongful death and lost uh, past and future earnings and personal injury for about 25 years. And uh, over that time period, I've seen lost household services uh, become an ever-increasingly important part of the overall analysis. Um, my partner, my first partner, a man named Floyd Durham, wrote a book uh, called Calculating Damages and Wrongful Death and Personal Injury in 1972. It was one of the first books ever written. Uh, in this area and in the book there was about 180 some odd pages devoted to calculating lost earnings and about three pages to lost household services. Um, I dare say if that book were written today it would probably be about equally weighted between the two uh, because this has become such an important issue. Um, so I'll give you an example. So <clears throat> the way I started my class uh, today was that I had a case where an individual um, uh, went, was retired, disabled, and he was about 60 years old. His wife was also retired and disabled, and she was 61. He was her sole support, so he performed all the household duties around her needs, took her to all of her doctor's appointments, prepared all the meals, did all the shopping, took care of her. She was almost bedbound. And um, so, unfortunately, he had a heart issue. So had to go to the hospital, and the hospital uh, unfortunately administered a drug that he had uh, a bad reaction to. Nobody could know that going in. It wasn't anybody's fault. It certainly wasn't on purpose. And he eventually recovered and went back and continued helping his wife. Um, two years later, he had the same situation. Uh, went back to the same hospital. <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, they gave him the same drug again. Uh, this time it put him into a coma for several days. He was a long time recovering. And again, when he recovered, he went home, took care of his wife, again resumed his duties. Um, happened a third time. At the same hospital. And goes back to the same hospital and they gave him the same drug, except this time it was a double dose because he had had the same heart issue twice before. So this time they killed him. So the case was a medical malpractice case against the hospital. And, but the problem was, if you think about it from a damages perspective, there was no lost earnings or lost economic support in terms of uh, earnings because they were both retired, they were both disabled. Uh, there was no ongoing uh, earnings in the household other than that from pensions. So the big loss, however, in the case was the fact that the spouse was no longer going to be able to provide the services that the wife needed. So he was not going to be able to drive her to her doctor's appointments. He was not going to be able to take care of her in the home, help her transfer from bed to toilet uh, to chair, help her uh, just in all of her activities of daily living. So um, the calculation that covers that type of loss is loss of household services. So as we have an aging population um, and as the uh, uh, bulk of the population trends older and older, you're going to see more cases like this where you have people 
who are injured and there is no earning stream. Uh, the only stream to worry about is the lost household services. And so the question of how you value those services is becoming increasingly important. Very good uh, analogy, very good uh, analysis. I had the good fortune of interviewing your partner before you, and he yes. told me, uh, Mr. Allen uh, uh, Needham, yes. and he told me that he's an economist. Uh, yes. What's your background? Um, I have a PhD in business administration. I also have an MBA. So um, uh, I, my basic focus in the business is to uh, worry about calculating damages in personal injury, wrongful death, wrongful termination case. I do a few commercial damages cases, do a few cases where I act as an expert on issues related to ethics because I'm also an ethics professor uh, at TCU. Um, but uh, the bulk of my work is in personal injury and wrongful death. And as you know, you were presenting mostly to CVAs and CPAs Correct. today. How would you uh, expect CPAs and CVAs to use your services or to possibly collaborate with you? Both. Uh, uh, I, so I also do a um, webinar series and several of the people who attended the session today have previously attended my webinar. Uh, or webinars and they wanted to come today to get more in-depth knowledge and be able to ask more questions about a specific topic. So my webinar covers um, calculating all the damages in a wrongful death case or all the damages in a personal injury case, which includes lost household services, but it also includes a lot of other things. So um, uh, the folks who came today who had already taken those webinars wanted to to dive much deeper into a much narrower topic. So uh, the first person that came in today actually introduced himself to me and said, you know, I feel like I know you because I've heard your voice for 15 hours, but we've never met. And he said, uh, 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 this, this is the topic that, that I really wanted to hear at this conference because I have a case right now where this is a huge part of the loss. Um, the person, in fact, <clears throat> who died uh, was 58 and getting ready to retire. So if you think of that person as having, say, a life expectancy of age 80, well, if they're 58, they're probably only going to work another two, three, four years, then retire. So the earnings component of their loss is only going to be two, three, four years. The services component of their loss is going to last until they die, you know, their expected date of death. So it's much longer, it's 22 years as opposed to two, three or four years. So uh, he said, I really need to get this right. This is very important to the family, the survivors, because they depended on the father for so many things. And uh, so we had a wonderful conversation during the presentation about uh, some questions he had specifically in his case and, and kind of more general cases about how you make these sorts of calculations. And given that you're housed at the DFW Metroplex. My yes. next question is, do you travel, if need be, to, to California, New York, or where, or internationally where, right. uh, where you need it? I've actually done international cases. I've never had to travel for one. We've always had a connection somewhere in the U.S., and I have uh, did my testimony in the U.S., but I've testified in about 15 states, uh, both at the federal and state level, and uh, you know, I just had a case, in fact, just finished a case in Alaska. Uh, I've got a case uh, right now, cases in Oklahoma, North Carolina, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, uh, one in Kansas. You know, so I, I do <coughs> cases in a lot of different venues. And Alan uh, said that about 90% of his work comes to settlement before he ever goes to court. Is that the same percentage for you? Uh, that's probably true, that about, uh, um, yeah, I'd say about 90 percent of them. I, I was just thinking, yeah, but I'd say about 90 percent are probably settled before they reach trial. And do you feel that's because you're involved or because uh, they managed to uh, come to an agreement anyhow? I think um, that expert opinions really do matter. I think that uh, it's one thing when you have a plaintiff only or an attorney arguing, well, I think the case is worth this. Um, in fact, I have a case I, on that exact point. I have a case that I finished yesterday, so the day before I came 
to uh, to this conference, and uh, uh, the attorney had made what I'd call a back of envelope calculation as to what this person had lost. Uh, it's a very catastrophic personal injury case, and the person's not going to be able to work again, and and they were a very highly compensated employee, but they also had stock options, and they had all sorts of crazy benefits like a car and and club memberships, and he had. I mean, it was just on and on. And so the attorney, the first attorney that had the case, had just done a back of envelope calculation saying, well, you know, I've got a couple of W-2s. I'm just going to add that up, divide by two, project it out for 20 years. I'm not going to worry about taxes. I'm not going to worry about benefits. I'm not going to worry about discounting to present value. I'm just going to say that's my client. Hmm. And so the case had just languished. It was just languished. And, and the defense basically didn't take the guy seriously for uh, five years wow. <laughs> yeah it, it's yeah uh, very unusual case so the attorney that attorney no longer has the case the original one the new attorney called me and said um, I think the reason this case has languished is because there has not been an expert involved who was credible uh, uh, who calculated the value that that the other side could address and maybe come to terms with. So um, he told him that I was involved. It was interesting because I've also done work for this defense firm. So the defense firm knew my work very well. Uh, they knew the kinds of things that I do and, and the methodologies I follow and the sources that I use. And so uh, he said they've already now scheduled a mediation and they expect the mediation to be productive. So. Yeah, I mean, I think we play a very important role because it's no longer uh, just guesswork uh, after we get involved. I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a sense that here's a person following accepted methodology, standard theoretical approaches, uh, accepted sources uh, in the field, and uh, it's just more credible. So, yeah. Well, Shannon, they told me to interview you for two to five minutes, but you're so fascinating and so engaging, I totally forgot myself and went for 12 to 15 minutes more like it. But it Thank truly is much. fascinating to speak with you and I hope I have more chances to collaborate, interview, or communicate with you in the future. Thank you. I look forward to it. Absolutely. Again, Mr. Shannon Ship from Dallas-Fort Worth. This is Ed Mofrad for Around the Valuation World.